Well, good morning. How are you all this morning? Good. It is so good to see you. You know, I woke up this morning with a certain verse in my heart, and it's from Psalm 122, and it was, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Is anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Yeah, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Why don't we stand together as we sing this song? Just like a tree that grows by the water And let the strong winds blow, I will not move Just like a child secure in the love of a father situation, no room for fear and doubt, no matter what I'm facing, the song of my heart is ringing out, I'll stand on your promise, I will not be moved, nothing can tear us apart, my faith won't be shaken.
lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, and I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Thank you, God. When all I see is a cross, God, you see an empty tomb. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet And I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you Almighty Fortress, you go Throne of majesty, 
the Father's will complete. He reigns in victory. Sing hallelujah to the King. He is worthy to receive all the worship we can bring. Sing, sing hallelujah to the King. He is worthy to receive all the worship we can bring. What He's done, what He's done, what He's done. Now, where 
you are in your life, you may look at it and you may say, this is a mess. Where has God put me? I don't understand this situation, but let me tell you, your steps, your steps are ordered yes, by God. Imagine. Your steps are ordered. Every step you take, He is with you. And He is for you. And He is in that situation you're in right now. And if you'll just hold fast and you'll trust Him, it will not always be the way it is right now. God is faithful to His Word. We're going to open up these altars. And an altar is just a place to humble yourself, to put your bow your knees and say, God, I need you in this situation. I just need to be reminded you're with me. If there's a situation in your life today and you want to come to these altars, you want to lift it up to God, we're going to pray with you. We're going to believe God to strengthen you and touch you. So as they sing again, we're just going to open these altars. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. I praise God for what He's done. What He's done. What He's done. All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. I praise God for what He's done. I praise God. what you've done and what you're going to do. We praise you that in the situation we're in right now, you are there with us. You are always on time. <clears throat> you are always on time. Always, always on time. And God, whatever the season is <clears throat> that's represented in these lives here today, remind them, you've never failed us in the past. And you are a God who's mindful. You said your thoughts of us are like the sand of the sea. They cannot be numbered. So, Lord, put your arms around your child today in this service. Speak your word of encouragement and hope to them. Remind them that you are there wherever that situation takes them. God is the one that's going before them. And that you will bring them through. And you will give them great and mighty victories. For in every season, in every season, what we learn most of all is the faithfulness of you. So, Lord, we thank you for that. We lift this service before you. We leave in you, God. Speak to our hearts through the word. And may we leave today Say, God, may that word take root and may I walk, walk in that word that I received today. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't he good to us? Why don't you stand with us as we sing this song? You guys know it. Whether the words are there or not, let's go ahead and worship together. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. And all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice And you have led me through the fire Oh 
I've known you as a friend, and I have been in the goodness of God. Give the Lord a praise offering this morning. Has he been good? Wow, wow, wow. We serve a great and a mighty, mighty God. Well, it's so good to see you here this morning. Just a couple things I'll mention. Guys, we had a great time yesterday. The Golden Corral. And uh, the guys affirmed that it wasn't as good as Norma's cooking. But let me tell you what, we had some great fellowship had great sharing with one another. The food was okay, but Norma, you're still a champion here. You, she just, y'all continue to pray for her. She had a little bit more breakage there than what was thought earlier. We just continue to pray for her. I want to bring you up to date. Um, Amanda Rotterman will be coming, not next weekend, but the following weekend. And who in the world is Amanda Rotterman? Well, that is our brand new youth pastor that is coming. And we're excited about that. It's going to be a great day. And my wife and I will be hosting her while she's here. One of the great things that's happening, and I knew it was going to be a make or break situation I said, everybody on our team right now is bivocational. In other words, there's none of us full time, including your pastor. And, um, but I said, are you willing to be bivocational? I mean, she didn't even hesitate. She's in a full time position right now. And our worship pastor is bivocational. 
myself, our kids, pastor. You know what? I, I'm very grateful. And without a doubt, she, she started tearing up. She said, I am looking forward to being a part of the team. So y'all pray for her because she's going to be looking for a job out there somewhere. Uh, she did manage Chick-fil-A and she said, Pastor, I know I could get a job tomorrow if I wanted to at Chick-fil-A. But I'm not sure that's what she wants at this point. But you know what? God knows all of that. And if you have something in mind that might even be a fit, who knows? You never know. But uh, she'll be with us in a couple Sundays. And whatever that Sunday is after July 4th Sunday, the following Sunday, the 10th. Thank you, Vanel. That will be, she'll be here. And I told her, be ready to preach because I'm going to let you preach and share. And uh, so it's going to be good because we have been praying for some time for God to open a door because I believe, and, and she's actually in a mega church right now, and it, for her to come to Jacksonville, she, she, it, it, I'll let her tell the story, but let me tell you what, the Lord's been pairing her heart to come to Jacksonville for some time, and she saw the video that Von L and I did, and uh, somehow her father saw it, sent it to her, knew something was stirring in her own heart about coming to this city, he just said, almost say, you got to watch that video. You just got to watch it. Their whole background comes from church planning. So let me tell you what, I feel like it's a fit. So we'll see what God's got in mind. It's going to be good. Officially, she'll be coming the 1st of August. And uh, we've got a lot to do because we are going to let her use the house next door for housing. I don't know if anybody knows this, but the average rental in, in Jacksonville for a one bedroom right now is $1,700 a month. So we're going to make that part of her package. So, hey, I'm just kind of giving you some ideas, some thoughts of what we've already been talking about. But I believe God is in what is about to happen, and my wife and I, we, we are just beyond thrilled and excited to see. Because how many of you know God loves our young people too? Here's Annie right here on the front row, and let me tell you what, she represents a whole lot more middle school, and then there's going to be space as well as we grow towards the, the older youth as well. So y'all just be praying for Amanda. If you don't remember the last name, just remember Amanda. And I'm sure, she, you know, it's a challenge. She's leaving Nashville, Tennessee to come to Jacksonville, Florida. She's never lived here in this city before, knows really nothing about it other than God put Jacksonville on her heart. So we'll see. God's got something great in mind. I want you to open your Bibles this morning to the book of Habakkuk. It's in the Old Testament. It's page 752 in my Bible, if that helps you. But today I'm going to talk about Moments. God spoke to my heart about doing a series on moments. Some moments in life are good and some are tough. Some moments in life can either be a setback, could be a comeback. Some moments in life are difficult to swallow. And I think everybody here in one of these messages for sure, you're going to relate. And we had a discussion with the men yesterday and just some real rich sharing with the guys and letting them share their hearts as well. But God put this on my heart to share a series on different kind of moments that we face in life. And I wish I could tell you that, you know, the sun's always shining there's never any storms on the horizon. Friend, if you're alive and you'll be for real, how many of you admit today we, we've never quite seen anything like this in our day, in our hour? Come on, let me see your hand today. I mean, these are different times, something like I've, I've never seen before. But I do believe that God is, he's, he's preparing, I believe, his church. He's preparing you and he's preparing me for what's to come. Everything that we're even living in right now is already in the Bible. We shouldn't be shocked. We shouldn't be surprised by some of what we are dealing with today. But the Bible 
tells us that you and I are going to have visions and dreams. Anybody know what a vision or a dream is? And I'm not talking because you had too much pizza last night. No, I've had those kind of dreams too. But no, I'm talking about something that goes beyond um, what you can quite maybe understand. I've had some dreams that when I had that dream, I, I really, I got up, I woke up, I was shaken and I didn't quite understand it all. And I, and I asked my pastor that I was working with and for those eight and a half years down in central Florida while I was going for those years at college. And he said something I'll never forget. He just said, Danny, in time, if it's God, he'll reveal that to you. It shook me to the core because I felt like it was a, a dream about the last days and the last times. And I saw buildings on fire and rioting and cars being lit and exploding. And I saw riots in the streets. I saw things that so shook me that I thought, Lord, what is that about? And here I'm, I'm only 19 years old and I'm beginning to say, okay, God, what is it exactly you're trying to say? Today I'm going to start about a, a message on moments in waiting. Everybody say waiting. waiting. Moments in waiting on the dream. I wish I could tell you that when God puts a dream on the inside of you, I wish I could tell you that you'll just go straight to the top with the dream and you'll hit Mount Everest. You know, I, I was studying Mount Everest and I was looking at that and if you've ever been brave enough or in shape enough to climb Mount Everest, come to find out it cost you about $65,000 just to take a tour up Mount Everest. Well, that ruled me out right away. I said, well, Lord, I'm not going to Mount Everest. No, I got more than that reason. I'm not going to Mount Everest. But there's a dream in some of your hearts today that God wants to take you higher. I believe God wants to take this church higher. I believe God's got things for this church that would boggle our brain right now if we could see everything of what he really is preparing and he wants to do in our future. But I truly believe today that there's things that are coming. There are promises that are going to be developed. There are miracles. How many of you still believe in miracles? I, I believe we still are going to see greater things in the days to come. And that, that's not me saying that. that that's, Jesus said that in John 14, 12. It's in the Bible. Jesus said, I'm going to the Father. And because I go unto the Father, he says, greater work shall you do because I go to my heavenly Father. Amen. Greater work. Say that with me. Greater works shall you do. How many believe when you're walking through Walmart, God might just have you pray for somebody? Now, I'm not talking about being a crazy nut out there, okay? No, I'm talking about listening to the Spirit of God. And there, there have been times I've, I've met people right there in Walmart and other places. And, and, and the Lord just said, I want you to pray for this one today. Man, friend, you can say a lot of things in a prayer. Hello? And you know what? God will, God will use you. There are things that God's going to develop over the years as you grow in him. But today, I want you to look with me in Habakkuk chapter 2 because this is what the Bible says. He tells 
Habakkuk, first of all, to, to write out the vision, he says, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. There's, there's different translations, the King James. I'm reading out of the NLT, but notice verse three. This vision is for a future time. I, I, I particularly like the King James a little stronger. The vision is for an appointed Time. Everybody say an appointed time. When God gets ready to deliver the appointed vision, hold on. It's coming. God says write the vision. It's for an appointed time. But here in the NLT here, it says the vision's for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, everybody say slow. Anybody ever get behind a slow poke? You know, I, I've noticed the older I get, I think I'm slowing down a little bit. I don't know why you get all these people go around. Sometimes we think God's speed is slow. Friend, how many of you know God's never been slow? God's always on time. And I don't know what you're waiting on. Some of you are waiting on a miracle. Some of you are waiting on God to give you a breakthrough. Some of us standing here today, we hadn't seen everything yet of what we believe God has impregnated into our spirit. By the way, the Bible says there's that that's born of the flesh, and I know it's referring to before you got saved and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. But I also believe, he says, there's that that's born of the flesh, then there's that that's also born of the Spirit. How many of you remember the day that you got born again, washed in the blood? Your name was written down in the Lamb's book of life. I'm grateful for that, but I also believe in the same tone here today, that there is that which is born of the flesh, and maybe you did have too much pizza last night, but then there's also that born of the spirit. In other words, God drops something in your heart. Well, how do I know it's God, Pastor? I'm glad you asked me. Because when God's in it, you can't shake it. When God speaks something so deep in the inner man of your spirit, you cannot shake what he said to you. Many, 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 many years ago before I ever even thought about coming to this city, I was up praying and I was agonizing. God, where am I going? What, what is it you're wanting me to do? What is it, God, you've got in mind for my life? I was... Southeastern those four years and I stayed another three and a half working with a pastor who him and his wife I, I, I just such have revere and respect for them those years I worked with them but I'll never forget that he said to me that night in prayer Danny one day you're going to Jacksonville I could not shake it I had many other places that actually we were looking at as well. Even went down to ungodly Miami. And all of you that are from Miami, no offense. <laughs> but I went down to the Miami area. And first of all, I said, well, I'd have to take a course in Spanish. I don't know how to speak this language down here. So many people. It, it's literally like walking into a foreign country. I stopped to try to get directions to find out where Florida State was going to play football one day. Took it to get it, you know, and I'm like, what did he say? No, I just knew that wasn't the place for me. God shut that door. Thank God. Let me, let me say something today because I, I truly, truly believe what I'm about to say to you. If you're not careful, in a season, in a moment, you can allow the dream to drift 
away from your shoreline. If you're not careful, you can get so distracted with your life, your agenda, your plan, what moves you that you can miss and abort. Everybody say abort. Abort the dream that God placed in your spirit. I've known many, many, many who at one time had a dream. Going to do this, going to do that, going to do this. But somehow in a moment of discouragement, in a moment of despondency, I want to encourage somebody today, don't ever forget the moment. Turn to your neighbor and say that. Don't ever forget the moment. That he birthed the dream in your heart. When it's God, you can't shake it. When God's in something, he's big enough to fight every devil that'll come against you. I'm so glad today that God's greater than every moment that I deal with. And right now, if you'd focus on some moments, it'd drive you into depression. You don't want to do that. Why would you dwell upon what's going to make you feel sick? Why would you focus on something that's going to drive you further and further away from the peace of God that passeth all understanding that keeps your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus? I want you to, some of you ought to write this down. Don't ever underestimate the dream God put in your heart. Don't underrate it. Don't undervalue it. I think the greatest thing that hurts God it's when we say, God, <laughs> I just can't. Anybody ever said I can't? Come on, let me see all the honest people in the room. I, I, I just can't. I can't. I have. I've had. But, but, but God, I, I can't. But I can't. No, Paul said I can. I can do all things through Christ. Now, let me talk about the power of one moment in the scriptures. How many of you believe one moment can transform your entire destiny in life? Do you believe that? You can nod at me. Amen, Pastor. Do you remember the thief on the cross? Do you remember Jesus is giving his life for you and for me? And do you recall that there was one on the left, and there was one on the right. Do you remember what the one thief said? If you're really the Son of God, <coughs> go ahead and save yourself. But I like what the other man said. Lord, here is a moment that would change his life forever. Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, would you remember me? Say that with me. Would you remember me? Do you remember what Jesus said? Today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. What if he had not taken advantage of that moment? What if the thief had have said, why me? Why am I dying today? 
Oh, the Bible says that in, in that moment, his life was changed. Thank you, Doug. Come on, say, it was changed. For eternity. When I read that a few weeks ago, I said, God, help me never, never, never neglect the moments that you bring in my life. How many of you are grateful for the moment when the Holy Spirit came to you and he knocked on the door of your heart and if you're watching me online today and you do not know Jesus, friend, you don't come when you choose. You come when the Holy Spirit knocks at the door. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, he will never bust the door down. But when he comes and he knocks at your door, he says, and I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. And if anybody's listening to me today and you're not right with God, friend, listen to the greatest dream that'll ever happen in your life. And that's to know your sins are forgiven and you're ready for heaven. Come on, somebody wave at me today. Are you glad today that you had that moment with the Lord and your sins are forgiven? Go ahead and rejoice for a moment. Go ahead and thank God for a moment. You took advantage of the moment God brought in your life. I still believe God can save a five-year-old too. I still believe God can save middle school kids. Now that I know it's a miracle, but I still believe God can get a hold of that age as well. Lord, when our kids hit middle school, I thought, oh my God, every devil in hell's after my kids. <laughs> Never undervalue or underrate or underestimate the moments that God allows. Now, I could preach right there a whole message. How many of you know everything God allows in our life is not always at peace? Sometimes storms knock at our doors. Sometimes trouble knocks at our door. No wonder God said when you walk through the valley. Say that with me. When you walk through. He didn't say camp out there. Pitch a tent. I want you to hang out there for the next. No. When you walk through. Whatever you're going through right now, how many of you believe there's a God that is able to take you by the hand and walk you right through that valley, that struggle, that difficulty? You know, we've, we've all known people in our family, and tomorrow my wife and I will be doing a service. Mary Gorley, some of you may have known her. She was with us at Ocean Way for nearly, I don't know, 25 plus years. But I'm grateful for her family that tomorrow will minister to, that God's going to help them through. You see, whether we know it or not, God's always working behind the scenes. Say that to your neighbor. God's working behind the scenes. Don't you wish you could always see what he was doing behind the scenes? Because sometimes that's where doubt creeps in. Sometimes that's where discouragement creeps in. Because God didn't say we're going to see everything in front of us. That's why he said you walk by faith. Say that we walk by faith. See, there are things that are coming that physically I can't see them. I can't see them in the natural yet, but I know as I believe, as I allow God to charge my faith, as I spend time in his presence and he, he encourages me. 
Some of you today maybe you've been waiting and you've gotten despondent, you've gotten discouraged. How many of you think Abraham got discouraged with his dream? He looks up into the heavens one evening and God says, I'm going to multiply your seed as the stars in the heaven." I mean, Abraham, he's creeping along, 50, 60, 70, 80. And there's no, not even, not even a son yet that God promised. Not even the first. You see, a lot of problems that we get so disheartened because we just hadn't seen anything happen yet. Friend, don't ever abort what God gives you. I declare today, I refuse to abort the dreams that God has impregnated into my spirit. Is there anybody else here today that can say, I refuse to abort the dreams that God has placed in my heart? Some of those dreams are for your family, for your sons, for your daughter, for your grandchildren to be saved, to be redeemed, for, their, for them to get right with God. Come on, how many got some family members here today that you are trusting, you are believing, but you know, Pastor, I haven't seen any evidence yet, so just because you had not seen anything happen yet doesn't mean God isn't going to do it. Some of you didn't believe him for a miracle for your body. Anybody else believe him for a miracle? Hello? I still believe he's a divine healer. Oh, come on, Pastor. Do you really believe he can do that stuff? Oh, I do. I still believe God can open the blinded eyes. I still believe he can make the lame walk. I still believe he can dissolve cancers. I still believe. Say that with me. I still believe. Preacher, you're kind of out there this morning, aren't you? Well, I don't think so. I think I'm right here in the Word of God. Because that's what the Bible says. These signs shall follow them that believe. Some of you, if you're not careful, you'll lose hope and you'll lose what you feel like God spoke to you. But then Abraham, he was 86 years old and here comes Hagar. And by the way, to put it all in perspective, you know, Abraham, he lived longer than 100 years old. I believe he was up there somewhere around 147 years old. Anybody plan on hanging around that long? You know, I don't know about all that. But here he is, 86, and Sarah shows up. And Sarah's, listen, I, I, I think I got this thing figured out. You ever, you ever tried to figure it out yourself? You ever come up with your own master plan? Oh, sure you have. I have too. And then Sarah says, listen, I, I got a handmaiden here, Hagar. Just take her, and she'll give you that promised son. Anybody here ever got ahead of God? All the honest people, go ahead, lift your hand. Some of us are driving Ishmael cars. Some of us have got some Ishmael stuff that's caused us a little pain. The Bible says that Ishmael came, but how many of you know that was not the son God promised Abram and Sarah. You can read it. It's real clear. Genesis 17. God speaks to him after that. And he said, Abram, I want you to walk before me and be thou perfect. You know what he was really saying? He was saying, Abraham, okay, you did it your way. But if you'll wait on me, I'm going to still give you the promise that I said I would do in the beginning. The Bible says that he was 100 years old. Can you imagine him looking at Sarah and thinking, she's 90, I'm 100, and uh, uh, okay, God, are, are you sure about this thing? Sure enough, Sarah got pregnant. Sure enough, Sarah gave birth 
to the promised son. Whatever, friend, the enemy is using to steal your dream, you need to say, God, I still believe. Say it with me. I still believe. I still believe, God, you're going you're gonna to do exactly what you said. In Habakkuk, he says the dream is for an appointed time. How many of you believe God keeps his appointments? God's not late in the delivery of what he said he will do for you or what he said he'll do for me. I'm grateful and I choose not to undervalue and underestimate the words of God if God said it and he's working even behind the scenes when I don't realize it. You see, moments in waiting on the dream can be challenging. Yes, God did bring the Isaac as he promised. What about Joseph? He was 17 years old. Did he have a dream? Sure he did. His dream... Now, I don't highly recommend that you go around bragging around your brothers like Joseph did. By the way, there's a few brothers still around that might throw you in the same pit. In other words, be careful. Don't tell your dream to everybody. That'll get you in trouble. Just like Joseph. But it's interesting that God used his brothers to catapult him over into his destiny. Ishmael's just so happened by chance. No, there was no chance to it. God orchestrated the whole thing. And here's some Ishmaelites. They take Joseph. They take him down into Egypt. He gets a good job. Then a lion woman Potiphar's wife has him put in prison for a crime he never committed. He now is in the wait up to some 14, maybe 15 years. But one day the king has a dream. He didn't know what to make of this dream. And somebody said, by the way, king, there's a guy down in the prison cell and he can interpret dreams because we know he did for a baker and he did for a butler. And he said, go get him. It wasn't long. He told the king what the dream meant. The Bible said God promoted him to be the prime minister of a land. There was a famine that came on the land and everything came to pass just like God. Joseph interpreted the dream. Yes, it came with pain. Yes, I'm sure there were days that Joseph was discouraged. He was despondent. He's wondering, God, what am I doing in a prison cell? What did I do to deserve this? I'm sure he had days he questioned God. Friend, you will have moments because the enemy, he wants us just to look at what we can see on the natural, but we got to see beyond the natural. We have to have faith in what God spoke to us and if we will I promise you friend just like he said there is an appointed time for the dream Galatians 6 9 has for years been one of my favorite scriptures Galatians 6 9 it says do not be weary in well doing for in due season everybody say due season in due season, you shall reap. Some of you are just waiting for your boy to come home. Maybe you're waiting for your daughter. Maybe you're waiting for God to save your neighbor. You're waiting on God to change the circumstances that surround you today. Friend, don't ever abort what you believe God speaks to your heart. Do you think Moses ever had a doubt about the dream he had? The Bible tells us that Moses had to flee from Egypt because he got impatient with that burden. And an Egyptian soldier, he killed one of the Israelites, the Hebrews, and he has to run for his life because it's become known that he killed an Egyptian. But how many of you know, no matter how far you run, God knows how to find you. He knows right where you are. 
Moses is 40 years later on the backside of a desert. The Bible tells us that God sends a fire to a bush. Friend, God knows where you're at. Don't think you can outrun what God talks to you and speaks to you about. But I'm telling you, when God's in something, He's the one that makes it happen. He can put fire in front of you, friend, to let you know, hey, I have not forgotten what I've already spoken to you. <coughs> it was just a few days later. He finds himself heading back towards Egypt to tell Pharaoh, the I am. Everybody say the I am. The I am hath said, let my people go. You see, Moses was just going about things the wrong way. He found out quickly it would take a real God to get the children of Israel out of Egypt. By the way, it still takes a real God to get somebody out of the gutter of sin. It still takes a real God to get a backslider to an altar and get them saved. It still takes God to woo the heart. It still takes God. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. You can't drag them in through the the door. No, but the power of the Holy Spirit can do just that. And he can touch their heart and he can bring them by the power of the Holy Spirit. You got to let God do it. When you pray, when you plant a seed, you water the seed, you got to let God do it. Tell somebody you got to let God do it. You can't do it yourself. Oh, I've got some I'd like to wrap them around the neck and get them in here. But no, only God can do that. Oh, you might could get them in here, but it's only God that's going to save them and redeem them and change them. Moses soon found out that it would be a supernatural power of God that would get it, Israel out of Egypt. And by the way, friend, it still takes a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit to change a heart, to change a life. That all things are passed away. Let me give you a couple more here. I thought about Esther. Esther was just 14 years old when she became the beauty queen. And at 14 years old, she's in a place there in Persia. And the queen upset the king, King Hazarus. The Bible says that he had a beauty contest. And the word says that Mordecai was her cousin. Mordecai looked at her and said, who knows whether you have been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. How many of you know none of us here by chance? Where you work, you're not there by chance. Even in your neighborhood, you're not there by chance. You know, I got a real precious neighbor to the left, one to the right of me. And he knows, she knows that Von Ellen and I pray for them. I, I don't know exactly how God will penetrate through some of the past experiences they've been through. I mean, you know, everybody's always got an excuse why they can't come, why they can't quite get past this or that. And that's why the power of the Holy Spirit can go places you can't go and I can't go. But I want to tell you what, when you pray, when you love, when you care, when you go out of your way, you know, yesterday I was in a hurry to get back up to the church because we were going to do a little workout, trying to get things ready for next weekend, July 4th, and ask some of the guys and, to come. And I was already in the car. I was already, and I, I pay with my credit card. And I mean, and I know it was the Holy Spirit. He said, son, you forgot to leave her a tip. 
And I saw, oh, Lord, I, I got to do it now. And it just, it, I, 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 ran, I ran to the car and I said, okay, I, I, I got to, I got to find some cash, and I remembered, I think I think I stuck a $10 bill on, in, in the front, and I opened it up, and thank God, there was that $10 bill. And I ran back in there and just left the car running, hoping nobody would steal it, but anyway, <laughs> ran in there and found her, and I said, ma'am, you blessed us today. I want to thank you. Boy, she looked. She says, thank you. I thought how sickening would it have been. She thought, a preacher, I helped pour coffee today, and he didn't even leave me a tip. <laughs> and I don't want to be the reason somebody gets bitter at a preacher. <laughs> no, if you'll, go, if you'll just go above board, and my wife waits for so many years, I, we just always, anyway, that's not part of the message, but. Friend, if you'll go the extra mile to love on people, come on, help me believe it'll work if you just, you'd love on them. Just love on them. Love on them. They don't need to hear any of our anger. Be, be, be careful about getting all wrapped up and tied up and all the agendas and all the stuff going on in the world. And sometimes, y'all pray for me, because sometimes, you know, you, you just want to say what you really feel. That's not a good idea. Esther came to realize one day when Haman was about to kill all the Jews, 127 providences, and Mordecai said, who knoweth whether you've been brought to the kingdom for such a time. Say that with me, for such a time as this. Say it again, for such a time. As... Folks, now I don't know what I'm about to say, I don't know when he's coming. But do you think it's possible we're getting close? Does anybody think we could be really getting close? Do you think he put you and I in the last generation? Think about that for a moment. That we may be it. The last ones to let our light shine the last ones to make a difference, the last ones on the earth to say, he loves you, he cares about you, he's got a plan for your life. Friend, I really believe we might be it. Now, only the Father knows that. Not even Jesus said, he said, only my heavenly Father knows that day or that hour. Friend, I'll just share with this. I, I do believe he's coming, but I still believe there's unfinished business that God has for his church. I still believe he's got more for his church to do. Does anybody else believe it, it's possible we, we could be here right in the middle of the end times? I want you to stand to your feet and John, thank you for going the extra mile to be here today. I know you didn't feel well. Thank you, Chanda, and the rest of the worship team for just carrying things today. Somebody's got to carry John once in a while. You know. <laughs> no, I'm glad he's here and he's standing. He's vertical. But, but, I, but I just sense in my heart maybe somebody today, I, I, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but Maybe somebody even listening online today. You know, I like what I like what Gallagher, B.J. Gallagher said. He said this journey is about progress and not perfection. Some perfectionists, well, if I can't do it perfect, I just won't do it at all. No, if you get knocked down, shake it off. I like what John Maxwell says. Oh, by the way, when you're down there, pick up some. How many of you believe you can pick up a few things through the years because you got knocked down, maybe with discouragement, maybe with doubt, maybe with despair? 
But I'm so glad that even if you get knocked down, it's not about your perfection because let me look at every one of you and I think you'll agree with me. There ain't nobody perfect in the house. Hello? But you know what? You keep getting up. You keep pressing. And by the way, all these that I mentioned, Abraham, oh, God blessed him. He, wasn't, he didn't have a perfect record. God did bless him. That great place, Israel, how many of you know? Yes, all because God blessed Abraham. Joseph, God blessed him. Yes, Moses, even though there's nobody in this book that's perfect. But do you know what? It's not about your perfection. It is about keep getting up because God will let you and I stay on the trail, keep pressing, and keep fighting the good fight of faith. Paul said, I'll have you to know all the stuff that happened to me has happened for the furtherance of the gospel. I just want to encourage somebody today with the dream that God impregnated into your own spirit. Don't ever, 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 ever give up. I'm going to read this and I'm going to close this altar this morning, this altar service. You really can't get where God has taken you without a test. Anybody know about a test? Anybody know about the test? Soldiers are tested before they go to battle. Students are tested before they can be, be promoted to the next grade. Doctors are tested before they can practice on you and I, on our patients, on patients. Pilots are tested before they have a pass to test, before they can ever get their pilot's lesson. Everybody say this, life is a test. Say it again, life is a test. Now, I don't know what test you're going through. We're all probably going through something different. But you know what? I'm glad that the God who started, He says, if you start this race, He said, fight a good fight. Come on, turn your neighbor and say, I'm going to fight a good fight. I'm going to finish this course and I'm going to keep the faith. Friend, keep the faith and the dream that God gave you and don't you back down, don't you back out, don't abort, but say, God, I believe it's going to happen. Come on, I believe it's going to happen. Let's just take a moment and thank God that God's big enough to bring together the entire dream of what He spoke to our hearts. Father, I bless you this morning. I thank you this day for what you spoke to us. And Lord, it's in the moments, even like a thief on the cross, that, Lord, his destiny changed forever because he took advantage of that moment that, God, one day I'm going to meet him in heaven. All because he said, remember me. Remember me. And today, Lord, I believe there's some hearts in the room that says, Lord, I... I still remember the dream. I still remember what you said. I still believe, God, that what you said, and Lord Habakkuk even affirms it, that the dream, the vision, it's for an appointed time. So Lord, even though it appears it may be slow in coming, Lord, we still believe you'll bring every bit of it. You'll bring delivery to the dream. I bless you for it. I worship you, Lord. Lord, there's some people here today that they know you, you, you gave them a vision. You gave them a dream. But Lord, I've never seen a vision yet that didn't experience a valley. Some that are in the room today, God's walking through a valley in spite of the vision devil you're a liar you can throw whatever you may desire but God thank you that no weapon formed against your children is going to prosper 
God, I pray that there will come signs and wonders in the days ahead that proves that everything you said, everything you spoke, everything, God, that was impregnated into our spirit, that that was born of the Spirit of God, it shall produce, God, exactly what you said it will bring. God, you said some will receive 30-fold, some 60-fold, God, some even 100-fold, and God, I just believe for people here today. Come on, if you believe that, just lift your hands across the room. God, I'm believing you. I'm going to see 30. I'm going to see 60. God, I want to see a hundredfold. God, bring to pass everything that God you said, and God will bless you for it. We will thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we trust you. While heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If there's anybody here today that would say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm right with God. Maybe you're watching online today and you just text in and say, man, today, Pastor, I need to make things right. I need to get right with God. If that's you, just you can either lift a hand or you can text online and say, I need to make everything right. If that's you, anyone, just I'm looking around to see if there's anybody here today that you need. You need to make things right between you and God. Father, if there's that one online today, I pray your Holy Spirit will tug at their heart. Oh, thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for the work you're doing in each of our hearts today. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you thanks. In the awesome name of Jesus. Come on, if you received it, give the Lord a praise offering today for what he spoke in your heart this morning. Praise the Lord. They're going to close with a song today. And church, invite Invite somebody to come with you next Sunday. July 4th weekend is going to be a, a great time to just invite friends. Hey, not many will turn down a free meal. And uh, so, hey, free burgers. They're not charging for anything. And make a little extra dessert for some of the visitors that will come, okay? Don't just make enough for, you know, us four no more. No, make a little extra. And uh, if it's chocolate, I'll go buy every, no. We love you, church. It's going to be a great weekend next weekend as well. You hold on to everything God has spoke to you. Let's sing. Let's worship the Lord today before we leave. If you're giving today, God bless you for your giving. God bless you for your involvement. As we go out this week, consider speaking Jesus, the powerful, mighty name of Jesus over those you meet, over your life, over every situation, every circumstance. Speak the name of Jesus because there's life in his name. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Shine through the shadows.
shadows burn like a fire. Your name is power, and your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Let's shout it. Let's shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Cause your name is power and your name is healing and your name have a wonderful week. Praise the Lord. He is so good.